be with the ministers of uh, trade and investment, uh, Ruerco Diaz and Maria Claudia Lacutir, who will be signing two very important bilateral agreements for promoting trade and investments and uh, enhancing cooperation between the two countries' tourism promotion offices. I greet Gustavo Jaramillo, president of ProColombia, who is joining us today at this very important uh, meeting. A lot of progress is being made in Cuba. We will later on have a special session where we can hear about the what has happened in the country in the meantime. Let me uh, hand the microphone over to the ministers so that uh, they can talk to us about these two very important agreements. Maria Claudia, thank you very much, Marisol, and welcome to Colombia, to the Minister of Cuba. Today is a very special day in our binational relation that is being strengthened today thanks to these agreements. This is a result of work we've been doing for several months. Minister Sarasti has been working with the Ministry of Cuba in an effort to enhance the benefits provided to Colombian entrepreneurs who want to integrate into regional agreements. The deepening of these trade agreements leads us to give our entrepreneurs the chance to grow through internationalization. At the international juncture in which we live, a context of contraction where we see falling prices in commodities and raw materials and commodities are going through deceleration and it has led many countries to reduce uh, procurement. So these trade agreements uh, strengthen the opportunity to uh, create more business. Cuba is a country that uh, has wonderful opportunities today. We It has worked uh, on a very interesting evolution uh, from different perspectives. And uh, what we want to do is uh, to continue being uh, your partner and work uh, jointly and together with Cuba. We have entered into an agreement that includes over 2,600 uh, tariff uh, uh, no, that leads to zero tariffs in over 2,600 goods, uh, textiles, garments uh, can participate in the supply of products uh, that uh, Columbia, that Cuban uh, users and entrepreneurs can use and buy. We are also going to enter into an agreement where we will uh, integrate Colombian uh, businesses, that is corporate Colombia, to make sure that uh, our businessmen will also uh, offer Cuban products here. So this trade agreement uh, seeks uh, to not just reduce uh, tariffs, but also implement uh, good practices uh, and to identify uh, rules of origin that are appropriate for both countries, that we have the tools that will allow us to deepen our sales and uh, our commercial relation and turn it into a lasting commercial relation. That's why the government of Colombia is overjoyed to sign this agreement because it will deepen trade between the two countries. And I'd like to welcome the Minister of Cuba to Colombia when I can think of no better way to welcome you to Colombia than the signing of this agreement between us. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Allow me to thank you for all the kindness showered upon us since our arrival in Medellin by Colombian authorities as well as the organizers of this event. As Marisol said, yes, this act we are celebrating is clear evidence that the forum isn't just a place for, you know, having academic type discussions and debates, but we can also enter into agreements that I'm sure will prove very important to our country's bilateral relation, as explained by Minister Maria Claudia. We, for quite some time now, have been working with Colombia in an effort to find the ways and means to strengthen our bilateral trade in a manner that will profit from 
the wonderful relationship between our two countries. And I think that we must also bring Cuban and Colombian entrepreneurs closer together so that they too can engage in business and besides this agreement of economic supplementation, I'm sure, will provide many tariff benefits for Colombian products coming to Cuba and Cuban products coming to Colombia. And that is why ProColombia and ProCuba will sign the agreement. The purpose of this agreement is to promote economic activities, not just trade, but also investment. And I think that we are on the right track. I'm hopeful that the steps taken by our governments will, in practice, translate into better and greater interaction between our two countries. Obviously, Cuba's balance of trade is a, is a negative one. And we don't import much from Colombia, but we want to import more from Colombia and export more Cuban products, not just, well, not just products, but goods and services, and to, you know, profit from our supplementarities. And hopefully, see this come through for the benefit of our peoples. And I thank you kindly for being here today and having the chance to sign these agreements. Thank you very much, Mr. Minister. I would like to give you the chance to ask questions about these the agreements to be signed here. Good morning, Edwin Borges from El Espectador. Could you tell us what the uh, commercial balance is between the two countries and what uh, Cuban products are of interest to Colombia? We have a positive uh, trade balance with Cuba. We've exported uh, over $6 million, and last year we saw significant growth in the number of exports. And the uh, process. Uh, we uh, signed today uh, will allow 1,200 products uh, to find their way to Cuba, and this, I'm sure, will uh, impact the products that uh, supplement our own so that we can work shoulder to shoulder with the government of Cuba and bring Cuban products to Colombia. The idea is uh, to provide entrepreneurs greater working opportunities through internationalization and goes hand in hand, as Minister Rodrigo said, with uh, a program for promoting imports and exports to be signed by Felipe Jaramillo from ProColombia and the uh, Cuban uh, export promoting uh, agency, ProCuba, in an effort uh, to uh, enhance uh, trade relations uh, between our countries thanks to all this uh, promotional work. In uh, the next six months, we will organize a, com a uh, trade mission, a commercial mission to Cuba so that uh, entrepreneurs of both countries will be able to uh, identify these business opportunities in Cuba. Let me tell you that uh, com the commercial exchange was a total of $70 million, but we are sure that uh, the documents we will sign today will allow us uh, to expand this significantly. Please state your name, Vicente Curtado Caracol. Of those 2,000 products, will they be coming in with zero tariff, or will that have a special gradual phasing out of taxes? And to the Minister of Cuba, sir, I'd like to ask you that there are many alternatives, many avenues regarding, let's say, pharmaceutical products. What could you sell, Colombia? What alternatives are out there? Because I know that the medicine in Cuba is very advanced, and there are many products available in many Colombians traveling to Cuba for health care. And in this specific case, what could you sell to Colombians? Regarding elimination of taxes, yes, some products will come in with zero tariff, and others will see the tariffs gradually phased out. 
One of the things we have seen is that today Cuba has not just uh, evolved in uh, trade and commerce, but we must also bear in mind that there is a very interesting potential we can work on today in uh, trade and uh, commerce, but also in tourism, because uh, our, this, relation, this bilateral relationship goes beyond uh, trade and commerce. We want this to be a long-term relationship. We want all our sectors to work together, and we uh, want to, to jointly promote tourism. It's very limited today. We have a very low number of uh, Cubans uh, coming uh, to Colombia. Less than 8,000 uh, Cuban tourists come to Colombia, and uh, 28,000 Colombian tourists go to Cuba. So there is yet a lot to do uh, in this regard. Regarding health, uh, it is true that uh, Cuba does have a certain potential. On the one hand, uh, health care and uh, the uh, pharmaceutical industry uh, and particularly biotechnological products. Uh, we already have Cuban exports of uh, pharmaceuticals and uh, biotechnological products to Colombia. In any event, I believe that uh, there is ample opportunity uh, to do business. It's a complex market because, you know, major transnational companies dominate this market. Uh, however, there are uh, opportunities whenever uh, local companies like the ones we have in Cuba produce a top quality uh, products uh, and uh, I hope that they will find their way to Colombia to benefit the people of Colombia. So in services, we also have services, you know, patients that could be cared for in Cuba, but in services that could be delivered in Colombia. We today have medical staff in over uh, 70 countries working under different modalities and uh, tailored to uh, the needs of each case. And if you allow me, I would like uh, to address what Maria Claudia just said about tourism. I would say that uh, more so than uh, Colombian and Cuban tourists visiting each other, we have to work on identifying opportunities for showing tourism flows of, from other countries visiting Colombia and Cuba, because we have supplementarities as well. We have, I mean, in Cuba, it's difficult to do the type of tourism you can do in Medellin, where you have these beautiful mountains and where you have you know, the uh, grandiose Botero sculptures uh, in, the, you know, our beaches are very attractive too. So what I'm thinking is that uh, we this year should uh, try to hit the 4 million visitor mark, which is a number similar to the number of visitors coming to Colombia, and uh, try to have the, them all come to our respective countries. And the idea is also to put uh, in contact like uh, our hotels and other sur tourism service providers uh, to enhance uh, tourism between our two countries. Uh, I see we have another qu question. and. Uh, why don't we entertain these two questions and we sign the agreement that maybe thereafter there may be time for taking another question. I work with FMRC and radio in Colombia. What other investments or what investment are, is Colombia making in Cuba? And Mr. Madam Minister, could you shed clarity as to the products? I don't know whether you did answer the question. I'm under the impression you did not. Regarding investment, this is one of the priorities uh, we've been discussing with uh, both entrepreneurs and governments uh, of Cuba to see how we can uh, elicit investment uh, in Cuba. And one of the things we're looking at isn't just uh, the uh, free zone of El Mariel that allows uh, any uh, entrepreneur to receive development benefits depend, you know, within uh, certain sectors identified by Cuba. And uh, obviously, Colombian entrepreneurs are very much interested in bringing uh, tourism to Cuba and uh, provide tourism uh, activities uh, inside Cuba. Though we're working on those two agendas, and more so than investment is seeing how we can strengthen the relationship with the products where Colombia is very competitive, you know, agri 
agricultural products, cosmetics, uh, textiles. There we have some very interesting opportunities that I'm sure would prove beneficial and would benefit greatly from the deepening of the uh, trade agreement we're signing today. We'll take the last question. I don't think we'll have time for a third. Then we proceed to sign the agreements. Just one more, please. Quickly now. For ministers going to Cuba, we have the visa requirement to meet, and actually there are certain time periods that do not exceed one month period. Would it be possible to change or modify the visa requirement, bearing in mind that we want to incentivate tourism between the two countries, because the truth is that it is not easy. Go, uh, traveling as a tourism, you need no visa. You are sold uh, a tourism card sold to you by the travel agency when you buy your airfare. And that can take 30 seconds, really. I mean, that's not a long and protracted process. Uh, far from it. But if uh, you are going to travel for business or something, and we have the uh, Cuban ambassador to Colombia who won't let me lie to you, and I don't think it takes them a month uh, to issue a visa. If they do, Ooh, Mr. Ambassador, please correct that as promptly as possible. What I'm trying to say is that for tourism, there's no problem. If, but for another type of visit, yes, a visa requirement does exist. And that is something that has to be in, done swiftly and quickly. And if that's not the case, it has to be resolved, no doubt. But I, you know, I trust my ambassador. He's a very serious man. Just look at him. Very well. I would now like to ask you, ministers, to please come and sign the agreement.